So again, we're looking at three equations and three unknowns. The process for solving uh, the system of three equations and three variables should be fairly familiar at this point. Uh, in this case, I went ahead and I multiplied my first equation by 2 and wrote it down here first. 2x plus 2y minus 2z equals 0. And then I wrote down the second equation, 2x plus 4y minus 2z equals 6. I'm wanting to eliminate the x variable. I've already noticed something here, though. The z variable is going to be eliminated as well. So minus, and then I put parentheses here, and I change it to a plus, change my signs of everything inside. And then 2x minus 2x is 0. 2y minus 4y is negative 2y. Negative 2z plus 2z is 0. 0 plus negative 6 equals negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 2, and we get y equals 3. So we got a definitive number for uh, y in our first step uh, of elimination. So let's go ahead and substitute that into our equations and see what we get. So we can end up with just two variables. So x plus... 3 minus z equals 0. That's going to give us x minus z equals negative 3. 2x plus 4 times 3 minus 2z equals 6. That's going to give us 2x minus 2z equals 4 times 3 is 12. And then if we subtract 12 from both sides, we end up with negative 6. And then 3x plus 6 times 3 minus 3z equals 9. That's going to end up giving us 3x minus 3z equals 6 times 3 is 18. And then subtracting 18 from both sides, 9 minus 18 is negative 9. Now you should notice something with our resulting equations. Notice that the second equation is the first equation multiplied by 2. And this third equation, this new third equation, is the first equation multiplied by 3. Well, what we know is those represent the same equations when one is just a multiple of another. So what's going to happen here? Let's go ahead and show what's going to happen. But what's going to happen is the variables are going to fall out, and we're going to end up with a true statement, not an untrue statement. So... I'll mark this as my new equation 1, this is my new equation 2, this is my new equation 3. So if I multiply this first equation by 2, I end up with 2x minus 2z equals negative 6. But wait a minute, that's already my second equation, 2x minus 2z equals negative 6. So if I subtract this equation from the first equation, I end up with 0 equals 0. Now what that means is that there are infinitely many solutions. Now that said, it doesn't mean that all three variables can be whatever we want. Because, you know, if I put in 100, 200, and 100 for x, y, and z respectively, that doesn't equal zero. So what we need to do is, first of all, we know that y equals three. We solved for that. So let's solve for x in terms of z. So x minus z equals negative 3. If we add z to both sides, that gives us x equals z minus 3. So what these infinitely many solutions are, we know that our solutions are x, y, z as an ordered triple, where x equals z minus 3, y equals 3, and z equals any arbitrary real number. So let's go ahead and check that. How do we check that, you ask? Well, since z equals any real number, let's say z equals 5. And you can pick any arbitrary number you want. So if z equals 5, then x equals 5 minus 3, which equals 2, and we already know y equals 3. So let's check that in our original three equations. So x equals 2 plus y equals 3 minus z equals 5. Does that equal 0? Yes, it does. 
2 plus 3 is 5. 5 minus 5 equals 0. So 2, and then now our second equation, 2 times 2 plus 4 times 3 minus 2 times 5 for z. We want to know, does that equal 6? Well, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 4 times 3 is 12. So 4 plus 12 is 16 minus 10. That does equal 6. And then in our third equation, 3 times 2 plus 6 times 3 minus 3 times 5. We want to know, does that equal 9? So 6 plus 18, that's 24 minus 15, 3 times 5. And that does indeed equal 9. So our solution is, there are infinitely many solutions based on these conditions. Or in the most general sense, there are just infinitely many solutions. And again, we started by using the process of elimination as we have in the past. Uh, we got to a point where the variables fell out, and we ended up with a true equality. And that automatically means that there are infinitely many solutions. And then to define the parameters, we solve for one variable in terms of another. And then that ends up being, uh, in terms of another, that ends up being the variable that we use for any real number. So in this case, there are infinitely many, infinitely many solutions. Uh, where x equals z minus 3, y equals 3, and z is any real number.